Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to the 51%. In this edition, we're taking a look at how COVID-19 is affecting reproductive rights across the globe. Coming up, how the Polish government took advantage of a lockdown which prevents public protest to debate legislation that would tighten access to abortion. We also talked to Zara Ahmed from the US-based Guttmacher Institute, whose latest research reveals the devastating impact COVID-19 will have on women's reproductive health. And yet we report on how France, by contrast, has extended access to medical abortions from seven to nine weeks during the pandemic. But we begin in Poland, where its parliament has debated a bill to tighten its abortion laws, which are already among the strictest in the world. However, many Poles are strongly opposed to the legislation, and despite a lockdown, they were determined to protest anyway, as our team from Warsaw reports. Since gatherings of more than five people are currently banned in Poland, these women's rights defenders protested in pairs or in cars. What she calls barbarianism is a bill that would remove the main exception to Poland's ban on abortion, termination for fetal abnormality. When the bill was debated in Parliament on April the 15th, women from liberal and left-wing parties argued forcefully against it. Każecie tysiącom kobiet rodzić tylko po to, aby bezradnie patrzyły, jak dziecko umiera w potwornych męczarniach. To nieludzkie. To jest podły projekt. Barbarzyństwo to za mało, aby określić tą ustawę. Conservatives used the same word on the opposite side of the argument. To wielki wstyd dla naszego państwa, że po tylu latach barbarzyńskie przepisy prawne wciąż obowiązują. Że pozwalamy na zabijanie niepełnosprawnych. Though social distancing measures meant many MPs spoke via video link, the debate was very animated. Sejm zajmuje się życiem. Czymś, co jest najbardziej oczywiste i najbardziej podstawowe. Weźcie w końcu w te swoje lewicowe głowy. In the end, the bill was voted through for further work in committees, where it will probably languish for years. A majority of the public oppose it. Indeed, more than half of Poles now favour legalising abortion. An estimated 150,000 Polish women find ways to get round the ban each year. Karolina Wienckiewicz works for a hotline that helps them. One option is to travel abroad, but at the moment that's possible only by road. To trwa po prostu dużo dłużej. Jest trudność związana z tym, że mniej klinik działa. Po powrocie do kraju po prostu jest dwutygodniowa kwarantanna. An alternative is to use mail-ordered medication at home. But COVID-19 has made that problematic too. Many women are in confinement with their parents and grandparents. Osoby po prostu też właśnie pytały, czy można to przeprowadzić w taki sposób, żeby się rodzina nie zorientowała, jak to zrobić. For many Poles, COVID-19 has only strengthened the case for liberalizing abortion laws. Now, the societal impact of this pandemic is set to be enormous. The Guttmacher Institute is an American-based reproductive rights research organisation. It studied what could happen if access to sexual and reproductive care drops by 10% over the course of a year. Not surprisingly, their findings revealed a massive setback to reproductive health, such as unintended pregnancies, unsafe abortions and tens of thousands of maternal and newborn deaths. Joining me now from Washington, D.C. is Zara Ahmed, the Institute's Associate uh, Director for Federal Issues. Zara, thank you so much for your time. Just take me through some of the major findings from your report. So our team looked at data from 132 low- and middle-income countries around the world, covering 1.6 billion women of reproductive age. We found that if there's a 10% decline, just a modest 10% decline in access to sexual and reproductive health services, that up to 49 million women could lose access to contraception. There could be an additional 15 million more unintended pregnancies. There could be up to 28,000 more maternal deaths. 168,000 more newborn deaths. That's tremendous. And that's on top of the existing mm -hmm. gaps and depths that were already there. So even before the pandemic, there were already over 220 million mm -hmm. women around the world in need of, a mo of modern contraception. 
220 million women, that is more than the entire population of Western Europe combined. This is not just consigned to poorer nations, is it, but also to wealthier countries as well. For instance, this, uh, the American state of Texas is enforcing curbs on medication-induced abortions as part of its restrictions aimed at postponing medical procedures deemed not urgent during the pandemic. I mean, that's an example of what is actually happening in your country? Absolutely. We see a dozen states or more where anti-abortion politicians are callously using the pandemic as cover to advance their ideology. And this will have short-term consequences for millions of women across America, but is also part of a larger campaign to undermine abortion rights through the Supreme Court. And this, as you can imagine, all the back and forth in the courts, the constant changing, all of that sows confusion and makes it so much harder for both patients and clinical providers. And that confusion is part of the point. They want chaos, they want confusion, they want the uncertainty, because it means that the harder things are for people to access, the further they have to drive, the more and more people are not gonna be able to get the safe abortion services that they want and need. So how do you convince policymakers during what has become clearly the worst global crisis since World War II to focus on protecting reproductive rights? During outbreaks and pandemics, it's really easy to focus just on the immediate needs, but we know that the consequences, particularly for sexual and reproductive health and rights, can even outstrip what happens during the pandemic. So with Ebola, for example, in Sierra Leone, it's estimated that 3,600 women and newborns lost their lives due to a lack of access to care or because they were too afraid or unable to access health facilities for services. 3,600, that's almost as many people who's lost their lives from the virus alone in Sierra Leone. That's tremendous. But we can learn from history and take action to prevent these catastrophic losses. It's not too late for policymakers to act. Zara, are there any governments at the moment doing the right thing? I think that there's always room for governments to do more. Um, we can applaud the expansion of abortion access in France, but there's always more to do, um, both within one's own country and also overseas through foreign assistance program. So we have been very clear that there's concrete steps that policymakers should take at all levels of the government, both for their, the people within their own country, as well as partners that they support overseas. So specifically, the things that we're calling for are for, pol for governments to support the expansion and promotion of sexual and reproductive health and rights as a priority during the pandemic. This would allow people to access services even if there are travel restrictions in place. We also want to help shore up national as well as regional supply chains so that commodities, including contraception and condoms, can get to people when they need them, where they need them. There's also so much more to be done to expand contraceptive access by making it available without a prescription, decentralizing distribution, and other actions. And lastly, and most importantly, I think, we have to address the unique vulnerabilities of marginalized communities. This includes racial and ethnic minorities, people living with HIV, uh, people living in humanitarian settings. We can all do more at all levels of government to support those communities who already had a hard time accessing sexual and reproductive health even before the pandemic. Zara Ahmed, we're gonna to have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And as Zara mentioned there, here in France, authorities have extended medical abortions to nine weeks of pregnancy to ensure that women continue to have access to their rights during the lockdown. However, family planning centres say the number of consultations has dropped dramatically. French family planning associations are there to accompany women through the abortion process, but they say current lockdown measures are restricting some from accessing the procedure. Whether that's because it's difficult to go out, because they're afraid of catching the virus, or even due to a sense of guilt.
Staff at the Family Planning Centres have seen the number of consultations fall since the lockdown began. They fear that this build-up of obstacles is standing in the way of women making their own free choice. IVG is still a taboo and in a normal way, it's a source of culpability for many women. In the period of confinement, this culpability is... Et exacerbé quoi. On est inquiet, te, parce que euh, parce que il euh, y, y a moins de femmes qui viennent faire des IVG en France, alors qu'il n'y a pas de raison qu'il y en ait moins que d'habitude. L'IVG reste un soin urgent et euh, les femmes ont le droit d'avorter même en cette période de confinement. The French government has recognized this as an urgent matter, extending the legal delay for taking abortion medication from seven to nine weeks. It can now also be prescribed via video consultation. These measures are aimed at limiting hospital visits. On leur explique que toutes les méthodes sont possibles, c'est-à-dire la méthode des médicaments à la maison, la méthode des médicaments à l'hôpital ou la méthode par aspiration à l'hôpital. Surgical abortion procedures are still being ensured by French hospitals, like this one, the Trousseau Hospital in Paris. Là, on n'a pas de problème de continuité d'intervention parce qu'on est là, on travaille. On a juste un problème, c'est que les femmes ne viennent pas téléphoniquement. Donc il y aura sûrement un retard de prise en charge de façon certaine. Et donc on craint beaucoup de voir arriver des femmes qui auront dépassé le délai légal de 14 semaines. It's a concern shared by Sarah Durocher, the co-president of the National Family Planning Center. On va se retrouver avec des femmes et des personnes qui sont hors délai français. Toutes les femmes et les personnes ne peuvent pas partir à l'étranger, tout simplement parce qu'il faut des moyens financiers. Though the extension of the legal delay for the abortion pill has been widely praised, for abortion rights defenders this is only the first step. They're now calling for the legal delay to access the procedure to be pushed back by a fortnight to 16 weeks. And that's it for now. You can also connect with us via our Facebook page, that of course being France24.51%, or do send us a tweet at underscore 51%. So until our next show, bye for now.